Hello people, this is Christian. Welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and this Geosphere. Oh yeah, it's a full sphere, it's not a Geodome in this case. And to start off, I'll save it off the start here directly. This is not a tutorial on Fusion for 60. You need to know how to use the software to follow this workflow. I will try to explain the steps I do and I will also explain parts of the geometry, maybe not every single step why I do the way I do it. I can explain that in another video, I will, otherwise we'll be here for a couple hours and I will most probably say something wrong. This here in front of us is a free frequency or free divider. This is one of a, is based on a icosahedron. You can see that by the, where's the pentagon face. There's a pentagon face and if you look at the two pentagon faces they have points pointing towards each other. So this means this is based on icosahedron. So we, this is an icosahedron face and then that is then subdivided in three parts. So we get a free frequency. I've already made videos on the two and the four if I'm totally lost. And this is how I do it. I cannot guarantee the geometry is 100% accurate, but I checked it with some online calculators and I get basically the same dimension for all the lengths of these struts here. And of course, this is just the basic geometry. If you want to make a true dome, you need to do calculations on how you will make the parts or if you have, yeah, whatever you want to use it for. And of course, uh, you can split it. Uh, should I? Uh, the problem is the free pictures, of course, looking from the front here is that there's no center line uh, that is equi uh, equivalent to the equator of the Earth or the sphere. So you can cut it like this. Just make this here. And the second problem you can see if you want to take it one uh, step up and do the cut here, that this is not a straight. You can see it goes up and down. And that's the result of the geometry. I cannot solve it. Yes, I can solve it, but uh, that's why you see when you see free frequency domes, they are often they are fixing this with a slightly shorter and longer uh, edges here to solve the problem. But this is just a workflow to create a complete sphere of a free frequency geosphere. So let's get over to the worky worky. As I said, I will not explain everything I do. I'll start with a sketch, I can tell you that. I could do it from the front. And I could turn off 3D sketching for now and do look at. So looking straight from the front. And I'm going to start by creating a golden rectangle. So I'm going to make a rectangle. Make sure I do not use any rect rectangles that are constrained horizontally vertically. Because I'm going to need this slightly tilted. I will use uh, the workflow where you use, you can use three golden rectangles oriented in 3D space and from that you can create an icosahedron. That's the workflow I'm going to use. So I'm hate rectangle. I'm going to mark all of it and turn it into construction geometry because I don't want the profiles. Step one, make another line, L of the keyboard, construct and go from here to here. This is going to be the diameter of the final geosphere. Uh, I make it horizontal and I'm going to use a midpoint constraint over to here. We might just as well dimension it directly so we can dimension this line here. So let's say you want to make a big one, we can make it three meters in diameters diameter. So that is 3000. And I'm going to move the dimension outside here. So we done that. Now we need to make this a golden rectangle. And this is how we can do it. We do a line. We need to make a cube. And then we're going to do a small arc. And from that we're going to constrain uh, the golden ratio for this rectangle. So we're going to start by making a line from here straight over to here. And the thing is I want to make the dimension from from here to here the same as here so we're going to use modify and we're going to do a break break off this line here and fusion gives a small warning tell fusion these two lines are identical like that and then i'm going to hit s on the keyboard and do an arc command i want to do a center point arc i'm going to find the midpoint of this new line we will break off here and i'm going to start up here and simply just do an arc out like that 
coincident constraint endpoint of the arc if i can find it where are you there you are and the point down here and by doing that we have a fully constrained golden ridge rectangle and that's our first rectangle need i need one more but we will be looking at that rectangle from the side so that's a simple line just going to do it uh, across the rectangle for now constrain it midpoint to the center point here or region point it's going to be perpendicular to this side of course because the three planes would be meeting uh, in perpendicular planes and the last thing this here needs to be say, the same length as the rectangle and the length of the rectangle is not the diagonal here is that side there so you're going to use equal constraint between these two and if we open up a sketch and have a look we have a fully defined sketch the last thing we're going to do we're going to make a line turn off construction i like to make this a normal line but easy to see this here is the height of one of the triangular faces of an icosahedron so this is a bit confusing i know i might make a longer video explaining this geometry but please follow along i have another workflow for icosahedron so if you want to do that instead because we need one icosahedron face this just happens to be a bit of a condensed or scale down workflow uh, with that said, we're going to do construct uh, plane at angle. Select, that's why I made this line a normal line, not a construction line. Simply select that. It normally makes it perpendicular to the plane of a original sketch, so that's correct. Hit OK. Create a sketch on this little pane here. I'm going to turn around so I can see things a bit. Hit P on my keyboard for project. I'm going to project in this point here and this point here. I avoid to project for line because I don't need the line. Let's hide the sketch, create, sometimes points disappear while you're doing things, but if they will pop up again, we will make a triangle. We will use midpoint from here to that point. We make a coincident between this corner and that. And we once again have a fully defined sketch. And now comes the interesting part. Uh, we need to now subdivide this triangle. Let's do a look at it so we can look straight at it. Uh, we need to divide these uh, in thirds, and that's quite easy. The center point here, that's the point that is from a corner down to a perpendicular point from the base here, in, from all three of you meet up at this point. This point happens to be one third of the height of a triangle. So very simply, make a line here straight over, make it coincident to this so this is one third that means that this distance here is two third and that's basically if you find the midpoint here we have one up a third elevation so we're going to do a line construction line here straight up one more line not construction simpler across here and then we use midpoint constraint midpoint this line and this line this will divide the triangle into three parts we really don't need any more lines, but just to visualize for you, I'm going to do some more lines here so you can see that I'm subdividing this triangle or this big triangle into more small triangles. You can see here, this is not necessary to do all this construction lines. This is just to show you visually what's going on. You can see I have divided this one triangle into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triangles because I've divided into threes. So, uh, what do you need more? Yes, I need some points. I'm going to use these points to constrain 3D lines later. So I prefer to put in points because they're easier to find. And I need here, here, and here. And why do I need this? Well, if you look at this triangle, there are tri small triangles repeating in one, 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 they are the same. This, this, this is the same. This, this, this is the same, basically. So I only need to create three triangles. I'm going to create this triangle, this triangle, and this one. And then can use circular pattern to get the rest of them. I'm going to finish sketch. So by this, I have my points as I'm going to use. I'm going to create a sketch, two of the points is on the uh, set x plane or looking from the front so i'm going to use that i will project in this point and the second point that's on the plane this one <coughs> like that i'm going to hit okay 
and I'm gonna do line from here straight up to that one. I will do a couple more lines. I will do one more line like this. Use coincident constraint between this and the projector point until fusion that these two lines are equal. You see, all the vertexes of the sphere will be touching uh, of all the vertexes of the geodesic sphere or geod geosphere will be touching the true sphere that's around it. So these needs all to be the same length. So now I need one, two, three more lines. So I'm going to do. Make sure you don't get any constraints here. Simply make uh, three lines. Line. I make sure no constraints have not locked on in, in any way to other things in this thing here. Let's mark all of these until fusion they're equal. And now I'm going to turn on 3D sketching. Coincident constraint. This line to this point. This to this point. This to this point. Oops, sorry. That was the wrong one. Coincident, that one to that point. Why does it not find it? Oh, it misunderstands things. Let's redo that. We're going to do a new line from here. Come on, line. Let's just do it like this. Coincident. Sometimes fusion can get confused when you do things. I'm going to make this one equally stop. If you get things that pops around the wrong direction, redo the line, redo it, and check that you get these one, two, three, four, five points that I want and I need for the faces. So, of course, I could do the faces in the same sketch as this one, but I sometimes I like to divide things into more sketches. So I'm going to finish sketch, hide this sketch, create a new sketch. Can use basically any plane. 3D sketching is on, so we're simply going to start doing lines from point to point. I'm doing the outer perimeter first, like that, and when we're going to fill in here, from here, and from here to here. And you can see they're turning the profiles, are turning blue as we're working because they are flat profiles. Going to hide that sketch for now, so you can see we have three triangles. So, head over to surface tool, patch. One, one, two, three. Hit OK. Let's open up our body browsers. Yes, we have three bodies, so we're going to select all of them and patch them up. Or sorry, stitch them together like that. Hide with sketch. I'm going to use that sketch as a reference. So I turned on the, the sketch three now because I, the sketches for the profiles I used. I need the axis here. S on the keyboard. Let's do a circular pattern. Circular pattern of bodies. This body, the axis I'm going to use. I'm going to turn on the sketch before, so you can see. So the first axis I'm using, that's the one that goes through the center of the icosahedron face. That's that one. They're going to be free because there's a triangle. Uh, let's mark all of them and stitch them together like that. Gonna hide that sketch for now, and we really don't need other sketches either can be good to, so we can see where it is for now. Uh, we now need to move the faces around because we need uh, creating the sphere. What we have done now, we have done the blue part here basically. So now we need to spin this around and we're going to do an axis, construct axis through two points. Outer point here and here, hit OK. S and circular pattern, circular pattern of bodies, this body around a new little blue axis. Of course, we're going to be five of them. But the thing is, I don't need all of them because we're going to do a circular pattern later. I want to avoid to overlap bodies too much. I'm going to do suppress and I'm going to hide this one and this one. So I want the face that basically is a mirror down here and I want these. So these two I save and I suppress two of them. I hit OK. One more axis, construct axis through two points. Gonna do the low point here and the center again. S and circular pattern. And bodies, this body, the last one was connected to the axis. Select the axis and it wants to do it five times. Yes, that's correct, but we're gonna suppress. We only need one now, and that's one down here. So we're gonna suppress these here like that. We're gonna hide 
our two axes. We can hide our sketch for now. And like that, we are done that much. And we're gonna take these four bodies and stitch them together. You might see where we go now. Yes, circular pattern, circular pattern. Bodies, this body, axis is the Z axis. Five times, yes please. Mark all of them. You can do it here, you can do the browser and stitch them together. And by doing that, we have a free frequency, geo, geosphere or geodesic sphere or yeah, a double dome. We can do an inspect for the fun of it. Let's select something. We do the pentagon and one step in that direction. Can we find the cross pentagon? Where are you? This should be that, should be that. That's one. Yeah, 3000. So the diameter, you can see this is the diameter of the uh, sphere that circumscribes this dome or this facet sphere. It's really confusing all these names. So, this is a workflow for creating this. I might revisit it and clean up some things, but this was a question how to do it. So, here's how you do it. It's not that useful for construction because there's no flat plane. You had to do some, uh, yeah, some fixing to get it useful. But, with that said, hope you find something useful in this video. Take care, see you around, and goodbye.